Hey, so, okay, early on, though, you're talking about how you were partying and everything. Did you lose your way, in a sense? Like, did you stop kind of having that enthusiasm for recording and everything? For sure. I was yeah. depressed, Adam. Mm. I just told you. I was, I was, I was like... <laughs> Really? I was going through it, man. I didn't want to, because you got to think about it. I'm in the house, and I'm looking at people saying I fell off. But I'm like, how the hell I fell off when I'm writing hits for your favorite artist, and I'm living in a $6 million house? But it's just, they, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They're not seeing me. They not know what I'm doing. And mm. it kind of gets to you after a while. You know, you're reading all this shit like, damn, then, you know, lawsuits coming in play, jury lawsuits, and this, this, that. you like, what the hell, man? you like, damn. And then, like I said, I went through all those trials and tribulations to make me a better person who I am today. You know, I felt like I, I went through what I went through for 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 a special reason. You know, mm. now I got a testimony. I could tell, I could inspire you, new artists and show them the way and let them know you don't got to get all that jewelry. Yeah. You don't got to get all that. Invest in some property. Buy you some say real with estate. a fucking brick on your finger right there. Oh yeah, but these shit from these shit from <laughs> six like five years ago. Boy, I ain't buy, yeah. I ain't been buying none. I I've been investing. This guy right here got eighty buildings. I got six. You know, with this dude. He, that's what I say like. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, he the type of dude to come in, he don't even let, he ain't like the typical managers is going, on, okay, you focus on music, I'm gonna get percentage off your shows. Mm -hmm. We go, you feel me? I'm gonna get da and cool. No, this guy's like, yo, Sean, aside from music, I want you to set yourself up. You've been through too much. You've been doing too much splurging. You don't been, you don't see where that got you. You don't see where I need you to invest. Mm -hmm. And I need you to go. I'm like, all right, Juan, let's do it. But there's but there's so many other strategic partnerships out there where people want to work with Sean. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. These right? days, if you're a big musician, there's a million different ways that you can capitalize my, on my, that. My right? work is easy, to be really honest with you. He makes it easy for yeah, me. Yeah, so him and his partner, mm -hmm. Hunter, you know, they got, shout out to Hunter, they got a crazy situation going on. And the guy basically just is like, yo, Sean, I want you to go little by little, but I want you to, you know, I started doing that. I started doing Airbnb properties and move on to lease to, to you know. Long-term wealth. Long-term mm. wealth. I, I, Sean has to focus today on long-term wealth, which that's what you're doing. And I think that that's the bigger part for his fans and the young people that look up to him. Mm. Yeah, the music is great. That's the foundation. The hits are the foundation. The touring is a foundation. What is he going to do? What is he doing 20 years from today, right? Mm. Where is Sean Kingston 20 years from today? And that's that, that's a wealthy real estate mogul. And, and being a pop star and like being constantly present at every awards show and being on everybody's records and stuff like that and then just making a lot of money and being happy these are two very different things that don't different always things. overlap right Facts. they don't because when you if you want to like had chosen to keep putting yourself out there constantly year after year you know it's like yeah, it's, people are going to have the perception oh Sean's Sean's doing great I see him everywhere yada yada but then meanwhile that might not be great for your mental health and it might not be great for what you want to be doing with your time you know like when you talk about being in the studio writing for people well you could get a big chunk of the money off of that record right there and not ever have to ever tour have it's to a tour. very very different experience different, right yep mm. and that's what it was with me you know i was writing a lot of stuff for chris brown i did the mosey record you know um um with him him french montana and amigos i helped out the ao record with tiger like you know i was i was i was definitely there for chris brown you know behind the scenes writing a lot of stuff and um, for a lot of other artists as well, you know, um, and I felt like this this is where it really, 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 really came to the point where it's just like, I, I, I want to come back out. Like, I want my fans to hear the new Sean Kingston, the older Sean Kingston, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's time again, and I feel like, you know, nothing beats itself. Like, right now, it's, it's we got a lot of stuff planned, and I'm excited. Because there must have been a time where you kind of felt a little overexposed and where being super famous didn't feel as fun, and then all of a sudden being a little bit more anonymous and just being in the studio made you happy. But then once you've had enough of that, you start to feel like, damn, like I, I kind of miss having that relationship with the fans and really being on stage. Well, I guess you're on stage all the time regardless, but, you know, putting yourself out there and saying what you want to say on records and all that is, is something that maybe you wanted to taste again at a certain point. Facts, yeah. Mm. And I wanted to go out there and do it. And I feel like, you know, I got him by my side. Shout out to 1G, 444 Management, Bethany. I got Empire, like I said. Shout out to Gazi, Nima, and Tina Davis, Happy, the A&R, which I got a beautiful Happy, uh, I got a beautiful A&R, his name is Happy. The dude is dope. So it's like, we got a whole team. And I feel like, you know, that's, together everybody achieved more. And, I, and, and that's what we on right now, so. And I, and I really feel like Adam, earlier in his career, he was doing all the lifting. Right. Right. So w when you're carrying the entire team, you get tired as a player. Mm. You feel me? So we, we have to put we have made a decision as a team to let him be the star and the owner. 
but let's support <coughs> him and let's care him because he was caring everyone, right? Spending millions of dollars helping everybody out, do, giving a lot of people jobs that wasn't sometimes doing what they were supposed to be doing. Mm. So it's about, about, I think it's getting fun for Sean now because now he's able to look at his organizational chart and look at his team and he could pick up the phone at any given time. This is what we're doing for you. Do you approve it? This is what you're going to do. Do you approve it? And I think that is what's giving you this clarity, Sean, today to be even greater than you were back then. I really, I truly don't, don't believe his career started yet. Mm -hmm. I think the world <laughs> is yet to see what's going to happen with Sean Kingston. Right. I think this chapter is, is everything else he was just doing was just laying the foundation. <laughs> now he's building the building. That's interesting because, I mean, when you look at a lot of people like who, you know, Michael Jackson, a prince, it's like, you know, when they were your age, they were they were just getting started in a lot of ways. You know, you, you, you're not like some you, you just experienced a bunch of success early on. And that's definitely the right attitude to have. Yep. And I'm excited, man. Like I said, I'm a godly I'm a godly person, you know, um, and, you know, I definitely understood where what it takes to, you know, what I'm saying understood what it takes to get back. And mm -hmm. I feel like. That's just hard work, determination, and and hunger. You know, I'm, I'm in the studio till eight o'clock in the morning every night, like just coming up with different concepts, different melodies, ideas. It's like just, just, just hungry for this again. You know.